My name is Rigoberto Sanchez. I'm a third year here. I'm a BFA acting student. My dreams in like five or 10 years, hopefully, is to get on Broadway. And, and uh, I've had dance training here as well. So hopefully that factors in. My name is Jere Aaron Broaden, and I'm a third year at UCSB. My role is uh, I am playing Patrick O'Donnell. My name is Emily Newsom, and I'm playing Cindy. My name is Roberto Tolentino. Uh, I'm a senior, and I'm a double major in the BFA acting program and in biology. Um, and I play Omar in uh, The Talented Ones. My name is Yusuf El Gindi, and um, I'm the playwright uh, for this year's Launchpad series. And I was invited by Risa Brainin to come in and develop this brand new play. <laughs> My name is Risa Brainin. I'm the chair of the Department of Theater and Dance at UCSB, and I'm also the artistic director of Launchpad. The process of Launchpad, of any rehearsal process, is just to, uh, to make the play uh, stage-worthy. A Launchpad pre-production is a safe place for a, a writer to experiment. All I'm saying, even the darkest thoughts have their, you know, their silver lining. The play is titled The, the Talented Ones. It's a very small line that one of the other characters says, and says, we are the talented ones. Speaking of the expectations of immigrants and that the parents put on the children of immigrants. They say very clear what they think of us. The people here, they have more love for the dogs and for people like you and me. You see it in their faces, the way they look at you, the way they speak about where we come from. But this, this is our home now. I think that The Talented Ones has a really interesting and relevant take on like this very specific issue that has to do with immigration things, but also its relevancy comes from discussing the issues that artists deal with in everyday life, because I, I am an artist and several of my friends are artists and the people that I learn from are artists, so it causes me to be a very reflective on my, the community that I participate in. His hands were all over you. So there was a little groping. Big deal. And it was more like an inappropriate hug that went on too long. It gives our students, um, many of whom are in our BFA acting program, which is a, a pre-professional conservatory style program, gives them an opportunity to learn what it is to to work with a player, a live playwright. But your love seems so dependent on my being a loser that I feel I would be betraying something in our marriage if I actually succeeded. I think you'd be dumbstruck if I succeeded. I would celebrate. And, and most of all, you can avoid facing your own shortcomings. Am I really the reason you don't pursue your dancing? If I do quickly think about the theme of a play, then everything I write become an, becomes an illustration of that theme, which isn't interesting. What is interesting is following the voices. You follow the, you follow the needs of your characters and you really see the play through their eyes. And you leave yourself open. You have a very rough outline of where things are heading. But you're hoping that the uh, characters will surprise you and take you in different directions. He needs to, he needs to prove himself. It's not just about being oh. creative. I, I had put in that uh, it was his first day of middle school. I like, because he had been homeschooled, so I just took him and he got bullied the first day. I see, I see. The actor inspires the writer, the director, and their very interpretation can influence the way the play is developed and grows. The idea is to, to metamorphosize the morph. Um, being able to change quickly and 
come up with things quickly and not slow down the process of something growing, just being able to step right up and add, add, add. So you couldn't do this on a lot of projects. You couldn't, there's a lot of things where you came from, there's just not enough time to do that kind of collaboration. There's not enough, there's not enough energy to do that kind of collaboration. Uh, Launchpad is collaborative from the get-go. 3D sets, lights, costumes, sound, music, um, with actors who are age appropriate. So sometimes we have UCSB students matched with professional actors. Sometimes we use our faculty artists as actors. We call it a preview production. So it gives the playwright a chance to see the play fully produced. There's not the pressure of the outside world. There's not, you know, the New York Times is not coming to review a Launchpad preview production. This is our 10th preview production. We've actually worked with one writer twice, Barbara Lebo. The biggest difference, I think, between working with student actors and with professional actors is the enthusiasm of the students and the discovery process being really like a revelation, watching them discover and create a character. When you were on a play, usually you sort of have to do guesswork and you have to like um, try and figure out as much as the character just on the words that are there. But if there's a question you have, I mean, sometimes you can email the playwright or something, but you can't email Shakespeare, for example. It's so wonderful to be able to have that direct link so if we have any questions about character, this line doesn't make any sense, anything else along those lines, we have an opportunity to be able to actually ask the playwright. But you're right, I think you, you pick the books. It's kind of scary when he gets close to your scene and Reese is like, and we're about to make a cut, and you're just like, I hope it's not the line that I like. It's been two of my lines so far that have been cut. What's a good place to maybe cut, you know? If we cut this, do we really lose something in the script? what is essential, what isn't, where we can start making those trims. And sometimes it's a question of, well, maybe the text is working, but the direction isn't right, isn't working, or the, or the actor hasn't quite found it. And so a line may not work. And we're very careful not to just cut a line because it's not working, but to really say, you know, is it, what, what's not working about the line? And then we can try a bunch of things and we reach a moment where we've tried everything that we think we can try in terms of acting and directing, then it may, may be a text issue. Let's go from, how about from bottom of nine? Were you were you good at what you did? Uh, Risa, yes. you know, I actually, I'm missing your love section than my mom. What do you think? Let's put it back in. This, this text can change today, it can change tomorrow. Like, entire monologues could be cut, you know, like, or characters could even be taken off or, or put on, you know. Um, so it's a, it's a very on your toes process. They get new pages and the scene's different. And I've seen the scenes be really different and the order of the play be really changed. So we're gonna put this scene earlier, we're gonna put this scene later. And so the students have to think on their feet. And I think it makes them very, very competent. And it's intense, it's an intense process. I'm nervous. This is probably one of the biggest things I've ever done and working with with the playwright on his work. I love the characters that Yusuf has created. The themes and like the messages that he is trying to get across with this play, um, I think they're universal. Isn't it bizarre how everyone talks about the future? The present always seems to be too fucked up to say nice things about it. All these songs about a better tomorrow. Are there any songs about a oh, wonderful present?
it's a developmental process that results in an actual full production. Professors, um, directors, choreographers, uh, just the other people that are influential into making a production. I think the saying in our department is, it takes a village. In a way, that's what the audience doesn't know. They don't get, like the really great part of this is the stuff they never get to see, which is the work that we're doing together to make it possible for an audience then to, to experience it. We spend a lot of time focusing on the tiniest of details, colors and textures in the background. Designing a set that tracks and has moving pieces like that is very easy for me because all I have to say is I would like the set to do this. It's a lot more challenging for technical director Paul Barnes and uh, Jamie who are the ones who have to figure out how this is going to happen. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you got to do stuff. There's always this constant give and take between what I always thought of as you know, the artist and the engineer and the, you know, the person who, who has the great idea and the person who has to actually physically make that a reality. I am painting a 30 by almost 18 foot flag. It took probably about four hours to tape all this so that everything is covered that doesn't need to be painted. And now I have to spray really, really carefully so that nothing uh, leaks and drips through. So I'm doing like three passes and I hope that's gonna be enough coverage and we're gonna get enough color on it. And it's gonna be lit from the front and from the back. So that's why it's on sheer fabric. And it's not the easiest thing I've ever done. <laughs> I want you to stop thinking of the worst thing that ever happened to you. When did I ever say that? It pours out of you. All the time. In little ways. I didn't know it was possible to tyrannize another human being with so much selflessness. Popcorn moving. We have to make sure the cables don't get cut. And then we, uh... Always call it out to make sure no one's in a bad place. To have someone watching uh, out front and out back to make sure no one gets hurt. Once the show gets underway, I'm the one who calls the cues. Um, if a certain light comes on, that's me calling it. <laughs> all right, let's do this, you guys. Everything is coming together. All the tech is coming together. So I love that. Some directors don't like tech. I'm not that person. There are some directors who come in and they're so open and willing to see what happens in the room that they don't have any distinct idea of what they want. And Risa comes in with a very clear picture of how things could go and then allows things to emerge naturally. She's incredibly um, nurturing to playwrights. I think she understands the process in a really deep way and creates a space for uh, a lot of creativity and risk to, to come in and to flourish. She can tell immediately when you sort of don't know what to do and she jumps in and she says, what if it was like this? And you're like, oh, it's totally like that. <laughs> and then you do that. You know, she has those homework assignments for you and you're like, oh, I don't want to do it. But then you do it and you're like, thank you for making me do it. Launchpad is like this great laboratory where uh, you're, you're testing your play, if you will, in production. The university is a great environment for the birth of new theater. The idea that we are in this compact community full of students, faculty, a, a community of smart people who are getting together to have a conversation. What? I'm his mother. I couldn't do that. Big deal. We've taken the show, so we're going to do a full run through now. Um, every time I see it run, I get a better idea of the of the play. Uh, I think I'm about ready to have an audience, so as to, that'll be very informative. I'm looking forward to that, because that'll be the next step towards rewrites. He's keeping some things at bay right now that he's not sure about, but he says, I don't want to do anything, I don't want to cut anything until we see it in front of an audience. You know, you really don't, you don't know what you have until you bring an audience, and you just don't. You're hopeful, you think things are working, until that audience comes in and sits down and responds to your play, or doesn't. It's at that point you understand uh, the nature of your play, uh, what may or may not be working, uh, what needs changing, what work you need to do. So, so yeah, yeah, it's... Um,
trauma. In this process, once they see something up and staged, then they're gonna know if it's working or not. Being in this acting program, it, it's been amazing because it allows us to interact with very accomplished artists like Youssef and like our professors uh, every day. And they really help us grow and not be so scary to, of the big world because they remind us that those big world people are real people like them. So it's been very helpful. But acting side by side with the students is almost my favorite part of it. Um, because I teach them during the day and then at night I would get to rehearse with them and perform with them. And that's like putting it all in action and, and talk about putting your money where your mouth is. Like I tell them something during the day and then at night I'm like, well, I better bring it. It's a really intimate, charged experience of exchange of energy. Like the universe, like when the universe comes together, like I don't, a cosmic, a cosmic collision of beautiful, wonderful life energy explodes and touches people in their guts and their belly buttons and they go, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> it's crazy, it's wonderful, it's stressful, it is so fun and it's crossed off my bucket list now. I may never do it again, but I'm happy I did it. For me, it's a painful process because it's always changing and you know, it's like being in labor and you know, you're having a child and ah, and then this beautiful thing comes out of it. And there is an exchange that happens between the actors and the audience. And that's why every single performance is different. Audiences always bring some kind of energy to them. So as calm as I am now, they'll probably bring me some kind of nerves, but it's good because that means they're present and ready to have a story told to them. So. It's kind of a lot of pressure, but it's it's really exciting, and I'm I'm just really excited to see everything come to life. Can you catch it like that? <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Okay, you did it. Okay, you did it. Have a relationship Good. with it. Go. Go. Yeah. <laughs> it's your partner. It's like weirdly shaped too. It's small, but it's got ridges. You got ridges. Mm -hmm. Oh, ball. Real jump. women have ridges. This is this is where we are. It's an exciting moment. I'm not worried at all. I'm just curious. I feel deep curiosity, like, how are they going to respond? <laughs> we, we will find out. <laughs> I always think that everything that we do is, you know, it's 50% of the experience, right? And the other 50% happens when the audience comes in. Because we have, all we're doing is we're making our best guess as to how things should work. And we're, we're, we're pretty, you know, we're pretty... <laughs> Good at that guessing game because that's what we do. But tonight we're really going to find out, you know, what's working and things that are landing or not landing. Yeah, yeah. Is there a play there? Mm -hmm. And what is the nature? He's been saying the whole time, I don't really know what the nature of this play is. What I do know is that you guys are fantastic in the play. I mean, I really am so proud. I was telling Erwin this morning um, just how proud I was of, of all of you and the work that you've done and where you're at and you're ready now. You're ready for an audience, you need an audience to take the next steps in your own performance. So you should go out there with great confidence because this is this is exactly where we need to be, right here in this moment. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm getting over a sore throat. Um, like I completely lost my voice through at the weekend and I'm getting it back, so I'm like, yes, just in time. Um, I'm really excited to do this just because uh, I get to wear a mustache. They seem comfortable. They, nobody seems freaked out, which is good. Um, you know, when, when the audience comes, there's that thing that happens. It's, there's that jolt in adrenaline. I think we're, we're all going to feel that. Of the world, um, Yusuf El Hindi's The Talented Ones.